Is there a spell to make Marvel take more risks like this? I can't figure that shit out. Come on. So Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness tells the story of Stephen Strange trying to save a young girl as well as the multiverse as we know it from the Scarlet Witch. What's up everybody and we have a new Marvel Cinematic Universe film to talk about and this is one that I have been curious about. I didn't love the first Doctor Strange. I've watched it a few times. To me that's the most templated of any of the origin stories in the MCU. But when you add horror elements, when you add a title Multiverse of Madness in the font of In the Mouth of Madness, one of my favorite John Carpenter films, you get Sam Raimi to direct the thing. Oh, you got my attention. And while it wasn't a complete home run for me, while they didn't knock it completely out of the park and it was right there within grasp, this is one of the most unique experiences that I have had in the MCU and the horror fan in me loved it. So starting off with the positives, I love the fact that we got a director like Sam Raimi to do a Marvel Cinematic Universe film and it seemed like he was able to do much more of his own specific particular style than a lot of the other directors have been allowed to do within the MCU. Now the MCU is good at championing filmmakers, giving them this property to be able to catapult their career. They look at the Russo brothers. Who the hell saw those movies coming? They were guys that just did community, so not taking anything away from them, but they get their hands in the cookie jar constantly. The MCU is very worried about its template, about its tone, about its specific brand of humor. Everything's got to fit into this nice little box. And while you can't argue with success, the fact that they have held their brand under such lock and key for so long has led to them having one of the most consistent qualities in any franchise out there. But I've always felt like certain filmmakers, especially somebody with the history of Sam Raimi and the fan base of Sam Raimi, if you're going to bring somebody like that in, let them loose, let them go wild. And I was surprised at how much they let him do that in this movie. This is a straight up horror flick. Like there's some MCU stuff here. It's not 100% of the runtime. The first half hour or maybe even a little bit more feels like just a regular old MCU film. But as soon as Sam Raimi shows up, as soon as the Evil Dead style camera tricks and transitions and the crash zooms and even Danny Elfman scores, all of these calling cards that all of us Sam Raimi fans and especially Evil Dead fans are looking for when they show up this movie really does stand out it really does go for it I don't want to overdo it I don't want to promise something on the level of a full-on rated R horror flick but this is by far the MCU film that goes the darkest as far as the subject matter as far as the things that are going on on screen as far as the amount of blood and death in this movie this goes for it to the point where I've seen a lot of early reactions saying don't take your kids to this one <laughs> I'm taking my kids to see this shit but nonetheless if you're somebody that's, you know, got young kids that, that don't like uh, dead bodies being, you know, <laughs> reanimated or demons flying around or uh, blood being covered on the face of somebody that they thought was a hero just movies previous, yeah, maybe leave the kiddies at home. Elizabeth Olsen as Scarlet Witch was fucking awesome in this movie. She is seriously like in my top three, at least top five MCU villains now. And to the point where we've had so much buildup with her character before as this heroic person, and especially if you watch WandaVision, which I'm gonna get into it, is pretty much required viewing to understand this movie. You've seen this transition in her character, this transition in her morals, in what motivates her, and that comes to full realization in this movie. Not only is she just, her acting quality is just on top as far as what she's been able to do with this character, showing grief, showing emotion, showing anger, but she's actually kind of terrifying in some spots, and it pretty much solidified for me that, you know, you could take your Captain Marvels and your Hulks or whatever, this chick here, that is the most powerful person in this universe, by a landslide. And I loved how they were able to balance all of the horrible things that she is doing, all of the chaos, all of the death that happens in this movie, while very much keeping her motivations sympathetic, something that especially parents understand, and never losing sight of that hero is still in there. Wanda's still in there somewhere. So even when she's at her worst in this movie, there's still glimmers of hope and the audience never loses 
that character. Special effects were pretty damn flawless in this one. That was the one thing about the first Doctor Strange that you wouldn't really get any argument out of me was all of the mind-bending and world-twisting Inception-style visuals were really pretty awesome in that one. They return here, they go even further. I mean, there's a whole sequence where Doctor Strange and this girl that he's protecting is like warping between multiple universes and the way that they realized that on screen was just very cool and very entertaining. And even all to like the horror stuff, whenever you start to get these apparitions and Sam Raimi really starts to let his roots fly in an MCU movie, all of that stuff looked awesome. And you guys know how I am when it comes to CGI and horror. I don't think they mix at all. I think they mix pretty damn good in this one. And I also appreciated the fact that this movie stays very much focused on the story that it is telling. Way too often in the MCU and even in other universes, I'm not just picking on Marvel, sometimes they get way too focused on setting up other things. A movie just becomes this catalyst where we got to set up this character, we got to put this person in this position for this movie that's coming out next year. We got to set up this team. And we've had a lot of movies do that successfully. We've had a lot of movies where it actually holds back the movie for me, in my own opinion, within the MCU. But at no point in Multiverse of Madness that I feel like this is all just a setup for something else. Or this is all just a catalyst for a more important storyline that they're going to be teasing. This is just a stepping stone. No. This is a really solid chapter in the MCU that is focused on one theme, focused on one story, and focused on this huge, gigantic battle between two of the biggest characters in this universe. Moving on to the mixed, I am not going to get specific. I'm not going to say anything beyond vague statements here. But all of the cameos, all of the things that a lot of us knew was going to be in this movie when you introduce a multiverse, and even the trailers spoiled some of it, and some other assholes spoiled that before the movie even came out last week, but there is multiple characters in this movie that are meant to be this big crowd-pleasing moment. And I have to be honest, for the movies that we have gotten so far in the MCU that have those moments, this one was the weakest for me. And maybe that has to do with the fact that the most significant one in my opinion, was spoiled in the trailer. And maybe it has to do with the fact that some of the characters that showed up here, I'm not really all that invested in. Cool to see you, but I'm not really gonna get a boner about it. So if you're walking into this movie just excited about the cameos, about who's gonna show up, about what universes are we gonna visit, that's really not the focus of this film. And while they were fun to see, while the sequence that most of this happens in was a very cool sequence, especially for where it goes, I think that the characters that are introduced that are the most significant here, I would have preferred they had been introduced to this universe in a different way. And I wish this movie would have just stayed the course and stuck with the story between Stephen Strange and Wanda Maximoff and not bother itself with inserting an entire sequence that's just there to wink at the audience. Moving on to the negatives. This is particularly because I am a horror fan. A lot of other people are not going to agree with this. I wish that Sam Raimi could have done more in this movie. Now, like I've said, I'm surprised with how far they let him go, but because they were letting him go that far, I'm like, well, damn, why'd you stop him? Just let him go full on. There's a whole half hour of this movie. Anybody could have directed that. There's nothing Sam Raimi in the first 30 minutes of this movie. And there's huge Sam Raimi sequences that are broken up with just traditional MCU stuff. Not saying that that's a bad thing, but I wish that we could have had a version of this movie that Sam Raimi could have just went balls out on, it might have been in my top five of this universe, and I'm not exaggerating with that. Everything that was classic, signature Sam Raimi, I was grinning ear to ear, I was eating it up. Every time they shied away from that and it was just traditional MCU storytelling, kind of felt like I'd seen it all before. And my final negative is another one that a lot of people might not agree with, but I don't necessarily like the fact that WandaVision is required viewing for this film. And I was very curious on that. I didn't know if this movie was gonna spend any time whatsoever trying to catch people up or trying to condense what happened in that mini series to give everybody a bit of a previously in the MCU moment, and it doesn't. It doesn't bother itself with that for a second. They tell you, they recognize what happened in a sense of you already knowing. And if you have no clue what happened in WandaVision, you have no clue how the hell we went from Wanda in an Endgame and Infinity War to Scarlet Witch that we have now, you are going to be completely lost with that entire side of the movie. And it is a huge piece of the movie. Now, while it is cool that Disney Plus allows them to do things like that, to give us things like WandaVision that a lot of people loved, I was kind of mixed on it. It's cool that they have that avenue and that vehicle to tell these side stories or to tell these little backstories that lead into these bigger stories. But I have not seen an MCU Disney Plus show yet that I have loved. 
and I really don't have a whole lot of motivation to immediately click onto these shows because of that. So it's gonna be very frustrating for me and anybody that agrees with that to have to have required viewing of nine to 10 hours of TV to understand the next movie. It's already a big ask for a lot of people to go and see every single MCU film to be able to keep up with this storyline. But when you start adding in all these TV shows that are mostly so far six episodes and see my uh, Moon Knight review for my thoughts on that, but things like WandaVision that were like 10 episodes, it's gonna start to get a little bit too much to ask for people. So overall guys, again, could have been one of my favorite MCU films ever if Sam Raimi had just unleashed a little bit more into it. But for what we got, I was actually genuinely and pleasantly surprised with how much of a horror flick this actually is. I really enjoyed it, enjoyed it much more than Doctor Strange 1, and I could see myself rewatching this movie quite a few times in a franchise that I don't necessarily pull off of my shelves and revisit very often. So if you're a horror fan, and especially if you're a Sam Raimi fan, there is going to be a ton of things in this movie that you are going to adore. Those elements might turn off some viewers, but I ate up every single second. So check this thing out in theaters, and then go out and buy it. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this review, please check over here for my playlist of all of my MCU reviews and rankings. And I also have my Moon Knight review that I just released a couple of days ago if you wanna see my thoughts on that. So check that out. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my upcoming Sam Raimi ranking here this weekend. And then probably after Thor Love and Thunder, I will once again rank this entire universe. So thank you guys for watching as always. And remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.